Hey guys, how's it going? This is Imranio here and uh, I will be showing you um, the new Tizen OS 2.0 um, It's been called Tizen TV uh, in some places so uh, let's get to it The TV I'm using here right now it's uh, the KS7500 It's a Samsung SUHD 2016 model So they made some changes uh, from the 2015 model the JS series which I reviewed last year I uh, overall like I, I really like the changes that they did okay bear in mind that there's no motion control anymore but uh, I think it's a lot better without the motion control I think the motion control was uh, quite a hassle if you know if you can't if you can't get to the the right spots uh, it, you know you gotta move your hand all around and then you know it, it's it's uh, quite a bit of a, of a mess Okay, so on the remote, there's this uh, home button, which brings up the smart hub. So as you press this, so this is what, what you're going to get. Uh, everything is on the bottom, so it's uh, easy to, you know, look at uh, all the, the user interface, rather than um, some parts being on the top and bottom, uh, like uh, what it was in, in the 2015 Tizen. So I'll start from the beginning. Okay, so we have settings here. We have source and search, and this whole uh, list is basically your your frequently used apps list, so which you can actually uh, I would say rearrange this bar. So if I tap down, you can see there's a move and remove. So basically, I can move this wherever I like it. So it's very customizable. So you can treat this like your home screen. So you have your apps and then you have live TV which you can uh, view all your channels. Basically everything related to media is here. So I've got Netflix, YouTube, Toggle, Karaoke channel and you even got apps. This is uh, basically the app store for Tizen. And you've got games which uh, is also tied up to the app store. And you have the web browser. So everything is here at the bottom. So if you go to the settings and you will see there is a second row on top. Uh, this is the quick settings. So if you want to change uh, stuff from here, uh, uh, I mean it, it's it's very convenient. So you can change the picture mode, standard, natural, movie, dynamic, and standard. I'll just leave it at standard right now. So that's uh, TV speaker output, and then you have the sound mode, picture in picture, and uh, you can change your networks from here. There's a timer, and there's more. So when you click more, you basically get into the settings itself. Okay, so this can be accessed uh, from here as well. So instead of going up, I can just tap into settings and I'll end up in settings. Okay, so let's talk about the settings. Okay, it's uh, it's a lot cleaner than uh, last year's Tizen. So we have uh, under picture, we got a picture mode, a special viewing mode, um, and uh, you have okay picture size. This is all blocked. I wonder why I think because of the app I'm running and everything else is in the expert settings so the expert settings is where you get to you know choose all your you know backlight sharpness color and so on so there's not many levels that you get into everything is there on the surface uh, which I like so it makes things a lot simpler okay as uh, let me get to the sound same thing you have the select speaker you can have your TV speaker or you can have your Bluetooth audio and so on and you have the sound mode and everything else is in the expert settings again alright so expert settings are basically the much less frequently used uh, stuff that you're gonna find okay then even broadcast mode has expert settings the network has expert settings as well the same thing for system and support so I'm not going to get into this, the, the details of, of all the settings. Uh, number of it will be similar to last year's Tizen. Okay, and this video is mainly focusing on you know the UI in general. Okay, back. The next one, the next uh, section will be the source. So the source is also very important. You have the connection guide that tells you you know uh, how how do you connect yourself. It's basically like a user manual. So you can get to it. Yeah, this is it. So it helps you with all your connectivity. All right. 
and uh, back to the source so you have the universal remote which you can uh, use the TV's remote to control all the other uh, all the other devices which is connected and you have the TV itself and this is my USB drive which is connected right now and I have this LG NVIDIA which I previously connected I mean right now they're grayed out because they're, they're not physically connected right now and all the different inputs easily accessible okay the next would be search search it's you know something like something like your Android search bar so you just tap onto it and then you can search for anything you like and it will just show it to you so let's search for maybe search for pixel P I X E L as you can see it's very responsive alright there you go so yeah so everything from YouTube is being shown here it looks like it searches from YouTube a lot more than anything else alright so you can tap on it and it'll get right into YouTube okay so let me get back so that is search okay besides search and this is your app list okay so within the app list I'm just gonna get right into apps itself alright again nothing much uh, changed not really a big fan of the Tizen ecosystem um, so I'm not really gonna get into it or uh, what kind of apps are available and so on this would be similar to the previous Tizen uh, OS alright gonna go back here okay so I'm just gonna get into YouTube okay this is probably like the only thing which uh, I would use so okay one thing to note is when you tap uh, when when a certain app is on focus you'll see that all the frequently used I wouldn't say frequently all the recommended uh, the recommended uh, videos are being showed on top alright so you can get straight right in to uh, the video without even launching the application so this works with YouTube and then you're, there's Netflix as well uh, toggle not too sure about that karaoke channel yeah you have apps as well so you know so there are a number of apps I don't know um, whether certain apps needs needs to support this or you know maybe there are some apps already supported like like YouTube here so I tap on this and then I enter and then I'll straight away get into the video okay I'm just gonna go back alright are you sure you want to exit yes okay so well yeah you can go back to YouTube just like that enter and then you'll get to YouTube it's pretty cool this is pretty standard right just like your previous uh, Tizen, uh, Tizen OS so you can just log in and then you can search for the best of YouTube 4k and so on 4k is pretty slow uh, you gotta have a really good Wi-Fi or I would recommend wired connection exit once more okay so 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 far you have seen this uh, setting source search and all the apps so I guess yeah this this would be it uh, let's see what else can I show you okay you have the web browser let me quickly get to the web browser okay now this is where I think motion uh, on the remote would have been helpful because right now I'm using the directional pad so let me just just close this alright so this is my featured uh, page uh, kind of looks like Chrome I guess let me go to MSN tap on it so if you want to tap on something you gotta enter and the keyboard pops up so yeah this is it Pay Poxel, oh, wrong spelling, but anyway, you get it. There you go. I'm 
gonna exit this okay I gotta go wait let me see yes exit web browser exit okay I'm just gonna briefly touch on the playability so I'm gonna go to source get to my hard disk it's really fast it has uh, it doesn't have USB 3 it's just USB 2 which is uh, good enough there are two ports with uh, one amp of power it's perfect for your external hard disk so I'm just gonna play a demo let me see Mad Max so as you can see this is a pretty huge file 40 gigs and it plays really fast tap on it there you go it's very responsive I, I just love how, how how fast it works this is the KS7500 running on a quad core processor and it runs just as fast or even faster than my previous uh, television which is the JS9000 running the octa-core processor so as you can see Samsung actually really um, optimized the OS quite a bit okay I'm just gonna enter and if you can go to options you can change the language there are no subtitles here but you can actually put subtitles in here I'm gonna fast forward yeah well yeah I'm um, overall I was I'm pretty happy with the TV uh, and the, the user interface Uh, but still I'm more of an Android person so personally I use an Android TV uh, NVIDIA Shield box Android TV uh, but if you do not have any uh, smart TV uh, system I believe the Tizen will serve you really well well that's it guys this has been a quick run through on the Tizen OS 2.0 which is available on all 2016 Samsung uh, televisions so hope this uh, video is uh, helpful for you and if you like this video hit the like button and subscribe thanks for watching guys